Hey everybody, it's your boy Jimmy Valentine, back at it again with a new video for 2018. My last video was a Star Wars video 10 days after the movie was released, and now I'm back at it with another hot take on a movie that's over 15 years old at this point, and based on the release of another film from a month ago, and based on the interaction of the star of the film and the cult figure that he portrayed in the film from an award show less than a week ago. So we're talking about The Room, the infamous 2003 independent film, which um, has had a strong and strange cult life for the last 15 years. And I've always <clears throat> heard about The Room. Um, the Room came out when I was in college. I was aware of it at the, like a, maybe a year or so after its release. Um, you know, in 2007, 2008 was when the film started to pick up a little bit of notice with the alternative com comedy scene in Southern California. And, you know, it kind of stayed in that little corner of the world for most of its uh, popularity. Now, I've watched Tommy Wasu be interviewed for a few things. I actually enjoyed a thing that he did called Homeless in America that I watched in uh, on YouTube once uh, before I knew about this whole room situation. I thought it was a decent documentary and an, an interesting kind of take on that issue. Um, you know, for me, what I thought about the film personally is that it's like a white people version of a deaf comedy jam or Wayne's film or like a clump situation or the Bernie or, you know, the old Bernie Mac special. Um, there's a, a bit from In Living Color from Martin Lawrence, I don't remember exactly which, where they're kind of lampooning Deaf Comedy Jam, and at one point, someone laughs so hard that they explode. And being at the screening tonight, I, it was like that a little bit. So you had, uh, I would say a third of the audience were filthy casuals like myself that hadn't seen the film, maybe saw The Disaster Artist, who just wanted to see what the big deal was. Uh, other people who have probably watched the film at home with friends and have their own little bits that they do with their buddies when drinking or watching this film. And then the hardcore people that go to the midnight screenings that throw spoons. Honestly, I thought the spoon shit was real disrespectful because there's gonna be people that have to go in and clean that shit up. Like, that shit's not cool. If you if you go to a movie, um, don't be throwing shit around. People gotta clean that shit up. You know, um, I say that, that shit was wild disrespectful, so. I didn't. I wasn't really feeling that. And then, unfortunately, I was uh, a seat away from a gentleman who thought that he was spitting hot fire. He, any time there was a pause or a silence in the film, he had his two cents to throw at the film. He should have kept those fucking pennies in his pocket because he was fucking garbage. So you know, I was this close to kicking his seat, but I, I, I shut him down. I'm like, homie, you're not as funny as you think you are. Let, let the movie do its magic, right? So, with all that said, I just discovered right now that YouTube has the room for to view on YouTube, the full, the full film. And I feel like I would have enjoyed it and gotten a better appreciation of it as a comedy, as a bad comedy, as an avant-garde film, if I had just watched it on my own, on my laptop, over the course of a day or while I was, you know, doing other stuff. So, um, experiencing it in the theater, some parts, people would just explode and go crazy at these things where you go, all right, I don't know where the joke is right now, or I don't know what's so funny. There's obviously a lot of strangeness in this film. Um, one of the things I found the most strange, besides the bad sets and the bad camera work, uh, there's a part where the fiance, it looks like her neck was damaged, and the bone seems to be moving out of place from her throat. So that's a bit disturbing. Um, the rooftop sequences, you know, they're obviously done on CGI or green screen. I haven't seen The Disaster Artist yet. I wanted to watch this film before seeing The Disaster Artist so I could kind of appreciate The Disaster Artist more. Um, I would say there's a part of me that's a little disappointed, to be honest, from having watched this film. You know, people have hyped it up. I've seen the memes. I've done some of the jokes myself online or with friends just because it's one of those things kind of like Star Wars where you don't have to exactly watch the film, but people talk about it so much and people reference it so much that you kind of 
know the tropes without really having visited the film itself. So I'll say this. Um, you know, the film's poorly done, obviously. There's some shots that are out of focus. The camera work is very much like sitcoms where it's just like camera that's kept uh, at a mid-level, away from the actors, for long periods of time, not a lot of rhythm in the camera work. Um, I went to film school. I have some knowledge of film work. I've worked in television myself a few times. I've worked in PBS, Del Mundo, and a couple other places before I decided to get out of the industry because I wanted to get uh, health care and kind of be able to retire at some point, which unfortunately, you know, uh, being dependent on the guild is, is a fool's gambit. Uh, I would say I enjoyed certain aspects of it. There's certain line readings that I found really hilarious. I found the young ward that Tommy adopts in the film really funny. I found his line readings, like, he's so achingly sincere that it's just very humorous. Um, the fiancé's conniving was kind of humorous. You know, um, as someone who, who grew up in Hispanic culture, this film reminded me a lot of uh, telenovelas. And, you know, the, even the plot, is, it, you know, the simple plot of, like, the fiancé cheating on the husband who's more wealthy or the fiancé who's more wealthy with the better-looking friend. That's a classic of telenovela. And, you know, in telenovelas, those are funny, and those are genuinely funny, where, you know, the acting obviously is better, the camera works better, and the, the, the parts where they push it to the extreme of the melodrama makes it fun. I have this very vivid memory as a seven-year-old of um, watching a telenovela and somebody, uh, a woman getting so angry at her husband that she can hit him with a car. So the car's coming, right? And the car kind of stops at least a half foot away from the guy and he just jumps. So I'm assuming they had him on a cable and pulled them as hard as they could or as fast as they could or sped up the footage. But it was great because you don't even, you know, the car doesn't make any kind of contact with the guy and the guy's just flying. And it's one of my most vivid memories, one of my most favorite memories as a kid. And, you know, there's nothing in here that tops that in terms of melodrama or ridiculousness or over the top. I can understand how the whites like this. If you've never seen a novella, if you've never seen Eastern European experimental film, and, and this obviously has a lot of pieces of that. Obviously, uh, Tommy is not from America. You know, there's certain words he doesn't know. Like, he never refers to her as his fiance. He says, my future wife, my future wife, as if fiance is not a word that he, he picked up while, while living in America. Um, the fact that he has characters constantly say his, his name in the film. Um, you know, he obviously came from the melodrama, that Eastern European melodrama style and tried to emulate it and failed. And it's fun. And I could see that if you were watching this with your buddies at home, this could be a fun time, but it's not that great if you know the source material or if you watch novellas, if you've ever watched a novella. Honestly, I would say just watch a novella because you can follow the story even without understanding the language because of the way the actors emote. Um, so I would say, you know, obviously I want to check out The Disaster Artist. I like Franco a lot. Um, and... Tommy's a character, and I love characters, and I love strange things, and I love weird movies and avant-garde shit, but I was really disappointed. Honestly, I think it's just the audience I was with, you can't really enjoy it if people are throwing shit at the, at the damn screen, and you can't really... Like, it's one of those situations where people, like, I grew up in the Bronx where people are constantly yelling at the movie, you know, and... Sometimes it's fun, like if you're watching a horror movie and the character's doing something stupid, you're like, oh, you're being stupid, or you're watching an action movie, and you're like, oh, yeah, get him, Schwarzenegger. But this shit was like, you couldn't really enjoy the ridiculousness because everyone thought that they were adding their own hot fire to this when they weren't. So uh, this is my review. I've picked up a bunch of comic books today. I'm going to be doing a lot more reviews on the channel. Um, my friend Urban Miracle is coming out with his album this year. I'm going to be helping him, helping promote his project. So you're going to see some stuff on my channel, some stuff on his channel. Uh, there might be some new music stuff. There might, the Jimmy Valentine, the rapper, might live. Um, you know, if you're just watching this for the first time, comment, like, subscribe. Uh, you know, there's reviews of all types of stuff that I do on this channel. There's music. Uh, you know, I do art. 
I, I love hearing people's comments, whether they love it or they hate it. You know, it's all a dialogue, and I appreciate anyone who gets a chance to watch this video. Peace.